Hi, I'm Kayla, and in this video I'll be going over how to calculate the acceleration of this block going down the slope. This is a typical inclined plane problem for physics, and there's a few equations you should know. The first is that the unbalanced force is equal to mass times acceleration, that the force of gravity is equal to m times g, and that g on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So to calculate the acceleration of the block, I first need to figure out what forces are acting and in each direction. I have a force acting in the downwards direction, which is gravity. This is Fg. I have a force that is always acting perpendicular to the surface, which is Fn, the normal force. And this normal force I will extend past the slope and form my y component, and I will declare my x component as the direction that the block is sliding. So now I've declared the two components, I have my x direction, I have my y direction, and I can do that. I've set uh, the x as positive down here because I know that the block is going in this direction, since there is no friction. And I have the force of gravity going straight down to earth, since that is the direction it always has to go. So to solve this problem, you need to ask yourself, what are the unbalanced force in the x direction, and what is the unbalanced force in the y direction? So an unbalanced force in the y direction would mean that uh, one of the forces, so either Fn or the component of gravity that's, that's going in against the Fn, is one of them is greater than the other. If that were the case, then either this block would be crushing down into the material of the slope, or it would be jumping off the slope. Because it's doing neither, we don't have to worry about the unbalanced force in the y direction. We only care about the unbalanced force in the x direction. In this case, it is some component of gravity that is pulling it down the slope, versus uh, the friction that could potentially be pulling it up the slope, or, or at least holding it there. So we're working in a frictionless surface. So that means that means that the force that's going to be resisting going downwards isn't there. So we don't have that opposite force to have to worry about calculating. So to calculate this unbalanced force in X, we need to figure out what is the component of force that is pulling it down here. So what forces are forcing that this gravity, this block, to, to go down the slope? And that is a component of gravity. Because we wrote gravity equals mg, we can't say that's the full force that's working on the block because it's not. It's pulling it directly downwards. So it's only a portion of the force of gravity that's actually making it move down the slope. And that portion can be calculated by looking at our triangle laws. go there. Now this here is the exact same force as above. This is my force in the x direction going down the, down the slope. So you should be able to see that this arrow here and that arrow are the exact same. If you don't understand that, take a second to just convince yourself that I have drawn this triangle correctly and that these forces match each other. Because we're at a 30 degree incline, the 30 degrees goes right there, and this vector is my gravity, which you've already decided. So now I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, this is my gravity here. It is also the hypotenuse of my triangle I've just drawn. This triangle is going to allow me to calculate the component of gravity that is pulling the block down the slope. And that component is the fx plus, which is labeled right here. You'll notice this is also opposite of the 30 degree angle which allows me to use my SOHCAHTOA. So I can use sine law to solve for this, since I do have a right angle triangle, and I need to know the opposite side, and I have the hypotenuse and the angle. So, sine of 30 degrees is equal to fx plus over h, which means fg sine of 30 degrees is equal to fx plus. So 
This is a big step right here. I've said that the unbalanced force in the x-direction is now equal to the force of gravity times uh, some portion, some fraction that is going to limit the amount of gravity on that block by a factor. So let's go back into my original equations here. I said the unbalanced force in the x-direction is equal to ma. Remember that is simply this force minus that force. We don't have a force here, so this is the only force that we need to care about. And that force is the component of gravity we just solved for. So now I put Fg sine of 30 degrees minus 0 is equal to ma. I'm putting the 0 there so that you don't forget that this is a difference of forces. In this case there's no friction, so that's 0. I'm left with mg sine of 30 degrees is equal to ma. Masses cancel out because they're on both sides. I have now 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the acceleration. And because the sine of 30 degrees is always one half, this is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared times one half is equal to a 4.9 meters per second squared in the positive x direction is equal to a. And that's my final answer. So just to recap, we looked at the unbalanced forces, we figured out there's no vertical unbalanced forces, it's only in the x direction, there's no friction, so the full force in the x direction was a component of gravity. We used a triangle and we, our, triangle, our right angle triangle laws to figure out what the component of gravity was. And then we simply solved for that using the sine of 30 degrees and plugged that back into our original fun equals ma equation, which is great to remember. The unbalanced force is equal to mass times acceleration which was what we eventually solved for. And there we go. So thanks a lot for watching.